Thank you, Shannon. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelsey, and I'm an occupational therapist here at Eisenhower. Um, just a little bit of background on me. I graduated with my Bachelor's of Arts in Psychology with minors in French and occupational science from the University of Southern California. Following USC, I studied at Columbia University in the city of New York, where I obtained my master's of science in occupational therapy. I grew up here in the Coachella Valley and I'm thrilled to be giving back to the Valley. So what is occupational therapy? AOTA, which is the governing body of our profession defines occupational therapy as the only profession that helps people across the lifespan to do the things they want and need to do through the therapeutic use of daily activities, which we call occupations. Occupational therapy practitioners enable people of all ages to live life to its fullest by helping them promote health and prevent or live better with an injury, illness, or a disability. Occupational therapy practitioners have a holistic perspective in which the focus is on adapting the environment and or tasks to fit the person. And the person is an integral part of the therapy team. It is an evidence-based practice deeply rooted in science. So just to summarize that lengthy definition, we help people achieve their greatest sense of independence through the participation in therapeutic activities. Occupational therapists work in hospital settings, outpatient settings, pediatric settings, as well as in the home. So in the hospital setting, we work to help individuals achieve as much independence in their activities of daily living as they are capable of. These occupations include grooming and hygiene, in standing sink side or at the edge of the bed, toileting, getting dressed, getting in and out of the bed, and walking to the bathroom or other household distances. In the outpatient setting, OT targets enhancing a person's independence through either teaching compensatory techniques or going over the skills essential to help an individual return to their previous level of function. So why participate in a driving evaluation? And this is the main reason why I know you all tuned into my Zoom lecture. Eisenhower's driving evaluation is run through the occupational therapy department, and it's something occupational therapists can be trained to specialize in. We recommend that you seek out our services if you have had a recent diagnosis or a change in health status that has the ability to compromise your driving. This test determines if one is safe to return to driving or if one has the necessary skills to return to driving after a recent change in health status, such as a stroke, a brain injury, or a trauma. Thus, if you are a family member or even your physician believe that your driving could put you or another person in harm's way, it would be a great opportunity to get evaluated through our program. The program will be able to help you tune in and draw awareness to different components of driving that could result in potential harm. Once you have gained awareness to your potential limiting factors, we will help you get the resources you need. Now I'll play a video for you guys about a person who had a stroke and it goes over the different limitations and dangers that a stroke can have on a person's driving. A stroke can cause many problems. Some are temporary and some are permanent. Many of the problems make driving more difficult. When we drive, we must react and move quickly. People who have had a stroke may have more difficulty moving their bodies in time to prevent a crash. Their vision 
might be affected. Their thinking may be slower, or they may be more impulsive than they were before the stroke. This driver has the use of only one arm to manage the steering wheel and the other controls in the car. This can create an unsafe situation. Strokes can also lead to problems with vision and the ability to think clearly. While most drivers would see this oncoming vehicle, a person with a stroke might be only able to see this much of the situation. Unless he knows this and learns to adapt, he could cause a crash. A stroke can also slow down a driver's ability to make decisions quickly when on the road. Sometimes, a driving rehabilitation specialist can make adaptations to your vehicle to allow for safe driving after a stroke. She may also be able to teach you strategies to accommodate changes in your thinking or vision. Some limitations cannot be overcome with rehabilitation. Talk with your family and your healthcare provider and plan ahead in case weakness, paralysis, or cognitive changes make driving unsafe after a stroke. The car is only one way to get around. Stay safe for yourself and for others on the road. So that, that video is just an example of how a different uh, medical health or health condition can affect a person's driving. Sorry guys, one second. So the driving evaluation is a pretty lengthy assessment. And that's only because it is very holistic and it encompasses a lot of different areas. So first off, we assess the physical component essential for driving. And we look at to different ways to see if you have the ability and the endurance to move your hands and legs through the full range of motion, like reaching up above your head, behind your back. You can touch your like your lower extremities. Um, we also like to see if you're able to look over your shoulder in preparation for changing lanes. And we look at all of these components through standardized assessments. We all, there's also a visual component to the assessment. So as you noted in the video that you just watched, there was a time where the gentleman who was driving had like a blind spot in his left vision, which wasn't allowing him to see cars approaching. Um, that's gonna be part of the visual component test that we will look for. We'll look for any kind of gaps in your visual fields these gaps can significantly increase the risk of accidents if a person is unaware. We also look at visual scanning techniques to look at your efficiency in identifying road barriers or different sudden things that could come in your way. We look at visual acuity, which is looking at the clarity of your vision to see if you're able to read signs. And we do this through the Snellen chart, which you'll see right here on the slide. This is something they do with the eye doctor as well. We will make sure that your eyes can move in all directions, look through all quadrants. And then we will also check your peripheral vision to make sure that you can see vehicles as they're approaching you from the rear. Next, there'll be a cognitive portion to the assessment. In this section, we will cover um, going over memory recall skills, problem solving skills, executive functioning, which is higher level processing skills. And then also the knowledge of behind the road safety and protocol. And that will be done through a written assessment.
And then the last portion of the assessment will be a driving simulation task. We have our own driving simulator in the Dolores Hope outpatient building. And this task is primarily focusing on your reaction time. So you'll go through a series of three different situations and this test will be ensuring that you're able to follow road laws and safety um, with emphasizing reaction times. It will also look at your driving endurance. All right, here is another video that's a similar concept, but not exactly the same as what we do here for our driving evaluation. In the fingers? No. no. And how about coordination? Can you put hands on the knees? Can you palms up? Palms down. Pat, 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 pat. Never as fast as you can. Lovely. So your driver who's got a stroke is going to end up with one a little bit slower, possibly. Okay, last thing to test of sensation. Just, we need to find things in the car when you're driving. You might want to grab the gear stick without looking. So we're going to look at how you are for finding your position without looking. I want you to point your knee, point your nose, Point to your other knee, point to your nose, shut your eyes and keep it going. Can you do that? Shut your eyes. Cheat. <laughs> Thank you very much. Lovely. And can you do it with the other hand? <laughs> shut eyes. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. Moving on down, looking at the bottom half. Thinking about just getting in and out of the car. Can you just do a bit of knee up and down for me? Lovely. And then can you do knees in and out? <laughs> Thank you. And can you straighten them? And back. This is where you move to one side because otherwise you get kicked. Lovely. And then thinking about if you need to, you can resist that. So just resist that movement. Just do it at the back of your hand and then bend back. Lovely. Obviously, you can add bits if you want, but that's usually enough. Heels on the floor now in like a pedal position. Can you do tap, 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 tap? Now, how fast can you go? Lovely. So I'm looking at dorsi and plantar flexion, but I'm also looking at coordination as well. That's fine. We don't go any further. Now we're thinking about um, strength for that. I'm interested in whether we've got any foot drop. So can I just resist that? Can you pull me up? Can you push me down? Lovely. And the same with the other one. Pull up, push down. Thank you. And now <laughs> finding the pedals. I'm going to ask you to do a little exercise for position sense for your feet. I want you to put your feet about that far apart like mine. Lovely. I'm going to demonstrate now. I'm going to be you. I'm going to put my foot in between yours. And I want you now to tap my toe, tap the floor, tap my other toe, tap the floor, go backwards and forwards like that, but look away and see if it still happens. Okay. So, there's my feet. Look away. Marvellous. <laughs> Good. And the other one. I know you don't do that with a clutch, but we're just looking at your ability. Marvellous. Thank you very much. Any numbness in the feet? Any loss of feeling? No. no. Marvellous. Okay. Job done. So we've done... The controls are broken. Anybody want us to do the top half again? So driving, starting at the top and going down. With the head and neck first, can you do me a good right and a left as if you're at a junction? Lovely. And with the body bit now, can you do a reverse movement, looking over your shoulder and the other way? Excellent. And then as if you're adjusting the car seat, can you lean forward and sit up again? Thank you. Okay. Anybody need the arms? Have you got the arms? Yeah. Do the arms are using the steering wheel that's on my truck today. Okay, so you don't want the... Do, do, the, yeah, do the arms. Do the arms. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you put your cardigan on. <laughs> okay. With the arms now, can you just go up to the top? Lovely. Hands behind your back. Out to the side. And forwards. Stay there. I'm going to push you down. I want you to stop me. I'm just seeing how strong you are. Lovely. Can you push me down? Can you push me apart? Push me together. Lovely. Can you hold my thumb? Can you pull me towards you? And push me away. And can you pull me towards you? me away. Lovely. And then thinking about steering, can you hold me again? I can hold you like that, I think. <laughs> and then I'm going to just relax. I'm going to turn you in a circle like that and back again. I'm now going to resist you. Can you do that? Okay. And you're going to feel all the way around the circumference of that wheel and back again. Usually it's mm. over the top that we have the problem, especially if you've got some shoulder problems. Mm. Okay. Okay. Left, right, both, both, left. Right, left. Okay, but with somebody who's got a problem, sometimes there's a delay 
and I'm actually saying the word. And sometimes they'll say left, right, or they'll say just if it's severe, they'll just say um, left, 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 or right, 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 because I'm not picking up that information. So it gives me a cue at that stage of that information. And also another one that I do for the coordination, as well as the dead fish dance, mm -hmm. is um, opening and closing on, on your knee like that. So you look at grip and release, whether they've got the coordination for steering the steering wheel. Your primary care provider will refer you to see us for a driving evaluation in case you or a family member thinks that this would be beneficial if a doctor doesn't mention it first. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, that's not exactly what we're going to be doing, but it was the closest thing I could find online without giving everything away. Once the evaluation is completed, um, a write-up will be done day of, and this will relate all of your scores to the quote-unquote standardized norms that are established by those who made these assessments. You will have access to read your driving evaluation through my chart. And your referring healthcare practitioner will also be sent a copy. The DMV will not see your results. So this is only with for you and your medical care provider. This is assessment is also a private pay assessment. It is not offered through insurance. Right now it's $150 per um, driving evaluation. Um, but yeah, thank you all for tuning in to my presentation um, and let me know if you guys have any questions and you can do so with the techniques that Shannon um, mentioned earlier. Sure, when there we go. What's your question? Uh, what about eyesight? Uh, uh, I've lost most of the sight of my right eye to uh, glaucoma. Uh, uh, what about the restrictions on eyesight? I seem to drive during the day, fine, no, no problem. I will not drive at night because of the darkness. That's not a problem. There's different, um, if, if it's a pre-existing condition and you're able to drive safely with those limitations, then that's certainly okay. Um, in our assessment, there are different norms required for both eyes as well as binocular ring or binocular vision. And those are enforced by the DMV. So we follow the DMV's restrictions on visual acuity. What are they? Um, I believe it's 20 out of 40. But let, let me double check that and I'll get back to you. All right. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question? Okay. I have one question that I've been asked. Um, does this report get sent directly to the DMV and are you in control of taking away my license or where does that go? Um, so this report does not get sent to the DMV. It will only get sent to your referring healthcare provider and your doctor is the only one who has the authority to revoke a person's license. Um, that's not something that I'm going to do as an occupational therapist and this will not affect um, your GMB status. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Uh, yeah, this is uh, Jack. And we had a question. Um, we, we at the Johnson Center, we do um, the AARP drivers course. Um, unfortunately, we're not doing it now because of the circumstances, but Sometimes people want to be referred or, or they need to be referred. Can, if they're not an Eisenhower patient, can they be referred to your um, program for the evaluation? Yes, as long as they have a doctor's referral, um, they can come to our Dolores Hope Outpatient Center for the evaluation. Okay. And you can just advise them that at this time it's $150 private pay. Um, to, to go through with that evaluation. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna wrap up here. Um, please note 
that if you ever want to reference this back and see any of this information again, this presentation will be posted um, at a later date. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us and we can uh, try and get Kelsey to answer that question for us. Thank you everyone for joining us today and we hope we'll see you guys at the next one. Um, one quick question, where are oh, they posted at for access? Um, these will get posted to our Eisenhower YouTube channel. Okay. And um, sometimes these actually go on the website as well. Um, I can give you those details after this call. I'll touch base with public relations. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. All right. So everyone have a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.